Today's lesson is on types of leaves in plants and trees. We're going to look broadly at all leaves. When we're looking at all leaves, they're classified into two major types, two main types. Those types are based on the arrangement of the leaf lamina. And the lamina is the broad, thin, flattened surface of the leaf. So as we're looking at this leaf, the lamina is the outside, this part of the leaf. And it is where photosynthesis and transpiration occur in plants. If you notice, this is a green leaf, so it's able to photosynthesize. The green pigment is chlorophyll that gives us that helps us to photosynthesize. Transpiration is the reverse process of photosynthesis and it helps the plant to be able to give us the oxygen that we need to breathe. So let's look at types of leaves and I sort of drew a schematic here so we can see the types of leaves. The first type are just plain simple leaves. That's a single undivided leaf. Here, just like this leaf, a single undivided leaf on this branch with the little stem, and we're going to talk about the parts of a leaf here in a few minutes. Then, of course, if we have simple, we also have compound. And compound, our leaf, the leaf is divided into multiple leaflets that are attached at the stem. So if you look at this leaf, this would be a compound leaf. We have one, two, three leaflets all attached at the stem. But then we have to say there are two different types of compound leaves. The first type we look at are called pinnately compound. They're feather-like arrangement of leaflets from, a mid, from the mid vein. So here we have a bunch of leaflets that are attached to a mid vein and then attached to the tree. Palmately compound, on the other hand, the leaflets radiate outward from a single point. So they sort of look like the palm of your hand. And we're going to look at that here in just a minute when we look at leaf structure. So those are the two broad types of leaves. So take a closer look at simple leaves. That single leaf with the undivided leaflets that are directly attached to the stem, which is the one that we looked at, a simple leaf, um, it's always attached to a, twi a twig by the stem or the petiole. This part here that attaches it to the stem is called the petiole. And the stalk that joins the leaf, that's the stalk that joins the leaf to the stem. So we have some examples, maple trees, oak trees, banana trees, mango trees. Those all have simple leaves. Compound leaves, we have that leaf that is composed of multiple leaflets that are attached at the mid vein and they're having its own stalk. So we have rose, clover, if you've ever seen poison ivy when you're out walking around, or chestnut, horse chestnuts, those are all compound types of leaves. Let's look at the palmately compound with those leaflets that radiate outward. Those are similar to the fingers on your palm. That's why it's called palmately. And it's based on the number of leaflets. Um, and though we can categorize each type of those further into the how many leaflets it has. So if it has one leaflet, it is uni, which means one, folate, which means tree. We talk about foliage, which are all the leaves on the trees. Two, bifolate. Three, trifolate, four, quadrifolate, and if it has any more than four, five or more, it's multifolate. Then if we look at pinnately compound leaves, which is another type of compound leaf, the leaflets are arranged symmetrically along the center of the leaf where each leaflet appears to be attached or pinned. They looked pinned to that mid vein or the mid rib that makes the leaf look like a feather. So we get palmately from being shaped like your palm and pinnately from the leaves looking pinned, like you would close pin something on the lawn. The leaflets look pinned to the mid vein. Depending on the number of times the leaflet is attached to the midrib, pinnately compound leaves are also categorized. The same sort of, of idea. Uni, one, pinnate. We have a single compound leaf attached to the midrib. If we have bipinnate, we have two. Tripinnate, we have three leaves that are attached. Sort of like our example here, we see these three leaves that are attached to our midvein. So we have some common leaf shapes, and I wanted to show you a few um, ideas. We'll look at some samples here of leaf shapes. Oval <coughs> leaf shape is kind of like that. If you see that that is an oval leaf shape. Then we have lanceolate, which is sort of skinnier, obovate, elliptical. This one is called spatulate because it looks like a spatula. Then we have one like this that's called chordate. 
We have um, oblocordate and then we have obdocordate. So this one is the, this one together that's oblonged and this one looks sort of like a heart shaped. We have one that's just plain oblong linear which is just a straight line. Then we have peltate and then we have ones that are called um, reniform that sort of all radiate out and then we have one that's called um, hastate. So they're just different types, different shapes of leaves have different names. I just wanted to give you a quick example of that so that you understand that um, there's a, a large variety of leaves and shapes. So now let's look at leaf anatomy. We will look at this leaf because it looks sort of like that one um, in our leaf anatomy. Um, here we have the apex. See how this comes to a tip up here? That's the apex. Apex always means the tip, like the apex of a mountain. Along the side here is the margin. If I flip it over it's easier to see the midrib. This one line that goes straight down the center is the midrib and then these that radiate off of there are called veins just like in your body. Those are veins. Down here is the base of our leaf. We've talked about the petiole, which is this part that would connect that leaf to the stem. And then sometimes we have these little tiny leaf-like structures that are called um, stipules. And they're here at the bottom of where the petiole joins to the stem. This whole thing is a blade. So instead of calling this a leaf, we could say this is a blade. Like a blade of grass, this is the blade. This whole part without the petiole is the blade. Most leaves are broad and flat and typically green when they're photosynthesizing. This one has already lost its chlorophyll because it has fallen from the tree recently. Um, the blade is the broad portion of the leaf. The apex is the tip. The margin is the, is the leaf edge. And it can be smooth, jagged, as in this leaf. If we look at the edge of this one, can you see the difference? How this one's kind of lobed. This one's very jagged along the edge. But that's still the margin of that leaf. Um, veins are vascular tissue bundles, those veins, and they help um, to support the leaf and they transport nutrients out to the leaf like your veins do in your body. Um, and then the midrib is just the central vein. Mid means in the middle, so it goes down the middle. And the base is the area of the leaf that connects the blade to the petiole. Right down here would be the base of this leaf. And then we can look here at the petiole, which we've already looked at that thin stalk that attaches the leaf to the stem, this part, and we don't have any stipules, those little leaf-like structures at the leaf base. Leaf shape, the shape this is, the margin, the outsides, and the venation, the vein formation, are the features we used in plant identification. So if we go out into the woods and we pick up a leaf, we can be able to tell what tree to genus and species according to those things, those features. I wanted to break this down a little bit for you and talk about leaf tissues. So if we were looking at this leaf, and let's look better here at the green one, and if we would take a cross section, you know what that means? We would take and cut this straight down and look into it. This would be the outside here, and this is actually showing you the back of this leaf, and then the other, the other parts. So on this outer part of this leaf, we have what are called stoma, and that's an opening, and those openings are, are, have two cells on either side called guard cells. And the opening and closing of that stoma help to um, uh, regulate the carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange. This is the upper epidermis. So we'll look at that like you're on your skin. Epi means on top of, so and, and dermis means skin. So that's the upper part of the leaf. It has a waxy, this one does kind of have a waxy cuticle, like a waxy feel. Then if we go on down, we get into the photosynthetic cells, the ones that can photosynthesize here. This is the spongy mesophyll. Here's a vein, the lower epidermis, just like the upper epidermis. Here would be a cross section of our guard cells, which, are, which um, open into our stomata and the air space here in the leaf. So leaf tissues are composed of layers of plant cells. And different plant cells have types from the three main tissues. We have the epi upper epidermis, the lower epidermis, and the one in the middle, meso means middle, the mesophyll layer. 
If we break that down, the epidermis is the outer layer, and that's going to secrete that waxy coating that you feel. It's called a cuticle, like on your fingernails. Uh, that helps the plant to retain water. So when it absorbs that water, it doesn't all leave the plant. It can help it to retain water because of that cuticle. And then those guard cells, I told you, regulate gas exchange between the plant and the environment, and they control the size of that stoma. So at night, they close here in regular plants, and then in the day, they open up up and allow more of that gas exchange to occur. Mesophyll is the middle and within the middle we have two parts, the palisade mesophyll and those are those big column-like cells. Most of the chlorophyll in the leaf is found here, therefore that's where most of the photosynthesis occurs. We also have the spongy mesophyll and it's below the palisade layer and it just has irregular shaped cell cells. Vascular tissue is also found here, the veins. This is where the veins are in the mesophyll, so we can carry those nutrients. The vascular tissue, the leaf veins are composed of, um, have different structures. They are tube-shaped. They look like a long, like a, like a, in a paper towel roll. And then they have those, they're called xylem and phloem. And those provide pathways for nutrients and water to flow throughout the leaf and plant. These two, xylem and phloem, carry those nutrients. I wanted to give you like a little bit of look at like adaptations of leaves. Some leaves are specialized. They have specialized functions. If you go into a restaurant, one person's a waitress, one person's a cook, one person, you know, seats people, the host or hostess. So leaves are, can become specialized. They perform functions that are different than just plain photosynthesis. We have an example of that would be carnivorous plants. Carny means meat, right? And vor, we're looking at eat. So the carnivorous plants have specialized leaves that lure in and trap insects because they don't just want to photosynthesize. These plants want insects for nutrients. So they look um, ornate or they look bright colors and they look pretty and they want to lure in these insects because that wants to supplement their diet. Not only do they photosynthesize, but they can supplement their diet from nutrients they get from those little digested animals. And a lot of people have seen a Venus flytrap or have heard of a Venus flytrap. Lures the fly in and once it gets them, enzymes that are produced by that plant, they release and they digest that prey so that that plant can also use. So it's sort of um, a specialization in a plant. Another example of leaves um, that are specialized are called pitcher plants, like a pitcher that you would put tea in or lemonade, and they're shaped like that, the leaves are, and they're brightly colored because the insects like bright colors. So it gets the insect in, and then the inside walls of those leaves have like waxy scales on them, and that makes them super slippery, and the flies fly or whatever insect it is goes to the bottom and get trapped there. And once they're trapped there, then they are digested by those enzymes. So that's just sort of a, an idea of specialized. We also have leaf imposters, things that look like leaves. An imposter is somebody who impersonates something else. So some animals that are out there mimic leaves in order to avoid detection. So certain um, bugs or certain insects look like leaves. That way their prey don't notice them. They just think it's a leaf and go on by. Um, they camouflage as leaves as a defense mechanism against predators. Other animals might appear as leaves to capture prey, which would be the opposite. They look like a leaf and a little animal lands on it and then they get their prey. Um, an example of that are um, Amazonian horn frogs. They look like leaves to capture prey. So we hope that you enjoyed our lesson on leaves and you could get out and find some leaves and learn to identify them and look around at all the beauty that's around you. Please, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon below and all um, future videos that are released by us, you'll be alerted to the fact and you can watch those and, and learn many new things and um, that will help you in life. So thank you for watching our video.